Hallo und willkommen, ich bin Meister Lehnsherr und you're watching Get Germanized and today we're talking about German wedding traditions. May and June are the wedding months in Germany. There's, I mean, it feels like at least, there's weddings all around all the time. I've been invited to a wedding, I've been the best man at a wedding, a Trauzeuge as we say in German. And, well, it doesn't seem to end in those months, which is why today we're going to talk about Hochzeiten and Hochzeitstraditionen, weddings and wedding traditions in Germany. Let's go. Lasst uns anfangen. First of all, we have to ask ourselves, does the typical German wedding even exist? Because while there are traditional things, many couples these days customize their wedding to be original and one of a kind. I mean, you have your classic wedding with a horse carriage ride, rose petals, everything you ever dreamed of. And then you have those who do skydiving or deep sea diving. In whichever way they want to dive into their marriage, these days it is possible. In 2017, over 400,000 couples tied the knot in Germany alone. That is a big number and many hopefully still very happy couples. These days men get married at around 34 on average and women uh, at the age of 31.5. So as you can see a little bit older than in the past where I think the average marriage age was around 25. In Germany the marriage becomes legally valid after the civil ceremony at the Standesamt. That is a very German tradition, or not tradition, it's a necessity. It is as you might imagine it. The Standesbeamtin, <laughs> long word, goes through, well, a checklist basically, you have to sign stuff. Uh, they talk a little bit about, if you want at least, about the couple's life, how they met and everything like that. But in the end, the important part is signing the document and saying yes. After saying yes, after she asks you if you want to be married, to so and so, you say yes, and then you're legally married, and that is the important part, not necessarily the stories or the surrounding activities at the Standesamt, of which there are usually not that many. During the time of the pandemic, by the way, attendance was very limited in these Standesamt Behörden, in these offices, so you really had to pick and choose who you want to come in there with you. Afterwards, you can of course choose to solemnize together at the altar, at a church, or you can have a freie Trauung, a free wedding, which is becoming more and more popular in Germany these days. My friends actually had one as well and it was very beautiful. It was outside in the forest and ah, I like thinking back to it because, um, well, it made me very happy. And also I'm not a big church guy, so that was definitely a nice alternative. In 2016, only 88,000 couples of these 400,000 got married at a church and I feel like it's becoming less and less as time goes on. When we're talking about most popular or most special wedding months for couples in Germany, like I said, uh, May and June, but also, well, up to September, these months are very popular since they're warm and nice. You can have a wedding ceremony outside, like I just said, or you can just, if you don't like fancy ceremonies, you can just have a barbecue with your friends and, then get married. <laughs> also, many couples try to have a very special and easily memorable, I suppose, wedding date. For example, the 8th of uh, August 2018 or something like that. When it comes to what the bride wears in Germany traditionally, it is of course a white dress. But these days more and more couples choose to be, well, colorful. A friend of mine, for example, at a wedding which I've attended, he chose the dark cocktail theme, which was quite interesting. For example, I wore like a almost entirely black suit with um, I believe it was a carmine or colored shirt and a dark cravat, which uh, looked really cool. And I believe the bride also wore something non-traditional. Even so, bride and groom still try to kind of match. For example, the groom might wear muted colors and wear accessories that match the bride's outfit. When it comes to what the bride and groom want as a wedding gift, well, since usually they already live together before getting married these days, uh, linen or like stuff for the house usually 
are not seen as the perfect gift these days, but many couples, well, they would like some money for their honeymoon, also for their expensive wedding, because, oh boy, the weddings can be expensive. And when it comes to traditional uh, wedding rituals that are non-debatable, well, I mean, the father walks the bride down the aisle, that is pretty much standard for most weddings, unless, of course, someone um, doesn't have a father anymore or doesn't know their father, then someone else might do it instead. Also, the wedding dance is quite traditional, even though the couple that I was the best man for chose to not have one because they're not particularly into dancing all that much. I practice dancing the disco fox nevertheless. One, two, tap, one, two, tap. It will be my nightmares forever, and I used it at the wedding Anyway, of course, a bachelorette or bachelor party is something many people have. It is called a Junggesellenabschied for the male version or a Junggesellinnenabschied for the female version. And yes, I know it's a long word. At these JGAs, as they are also called, since it is a shorter version, this abbreviation is used quite often, well, you can do whatever you think the bride or groom would like. But it's also supposed to be something special that you don't do every day. So don't just go drinking at a bar, even though if that's what you guys like, why not? We, for example, went kart racing. We went to a distillery. Uh, we uh, rented out a place for the weekend, a really nice old German cottage, which, by the way, you can find my video about uh, on my channel here, Get Germanized as well. Uh, just type in old German house or old German cottage, cotton, K-O-T-T-E-N, and you will find the video. It is a beautiful place, and you can do that, of course, but you can do anything you want, really. There's no limit. A traditional thing to do is also to have the so-called Bauchladen, to have like a shop around, strapped around your neck, basically, like a little, well, like a little uh, shelf where people uh, can buy stuff from you, and that money goes toward the wedding. This is something quite embarrassing for some people. My friend, for example, definitely did not want that. He ex explicitly told us beforehand, so we didn't do that. But, of course, you can do it. Some people even, well, sell kisses, for example. That is a thing that happened before. Don't have to do it, but it happens. Of course, the flower children are a thing during the wedding, like uh, they are probably in other countries as well where you choose a little cute boy or girl, probably under 10 or something like that, or could be over 10, I don't know actually what the preferred age for flower children is, but what they do basically is put flower petals in front of the bride and groom when they walk to, well, where they get married. They do this because it is said that the scent of the flower petals attracts the goddess of fertility. In Germany, many brides want to do the flower bouquet throwing. The men, on the other hand, the single men, or maybe the men that are in a relatively new relationship, they sometimes dread this tradition. I don't know why, Pfft, I have no idea. But the women uh, used to at least like it from what I've seen. And it is like you know the tradition, the bride stands with their back to the crowd and throws the uh, well, the flowers and whoever catches the flowers is set to get married next. A wedding cake is something many people do as well. My friends, for example, didn't have like an official big massive cake at the wedding, but they had like a small one after the civil ceremony, uh, which was still very nice, but you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Many people do though. If you do choose to have a wedding cake, you cut it together as a couple. You can choose, well, whatever time during the wedding you like. And my friends, for example, chose close to midnight, the ones that did have a wedding cake. And it is said, well, because you cut the cake together, whosever hand is on top while doing so, is gonna have the most say during the marriage. I'm not sure how accurate this is. Probably not a whole lot, but now you know. Fun fact, the white in the white dress is supposed to reflect light and purity. Of course, every bride is totally pure on the day of their wedding. Mm. Another cute tradition is to have money in the bride's shoes during the wedding ceremony or during the wedding day. Not necessarily like big coins or anything like that, but a penny-sized coin, something like that. Or, I mean, paper money would work as well, because otherwise I believe they wouldn't leave the wedding day without severe foot pain. And what bride would want that? I'm not sure. Another cute wedding tradition in Germany is that the guests of the ceremony stand on, well, the left and the right side of the doors, the wedding 
uh, or the wedded couple will come out of and then uh, enclose their hands towards each other, so hold hands basically, to form a kind of tunnel. The tunnel is to represent, well, the right path that they have chosen together and the sometimes, well, very narrow tunnel, because, I mean, they're, they're holding hands like that and they have to walk underneath it, is supposed to represent the possible obstacles the wedded couple is, well, gonna overcome. Something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue is also a tradition couples in Germany, well, do sometimes. Not everyone, but many do. The old obviously represents the past and here often family ornaments are used. The new represents the new stage of life and can be represented, for example, by the wedding dress. The borrowed is usually provided by the mother or close friend and is supposed to symbolize security and happiness. And since blue is supposed to be the color of fidelity, it often rounds out the whole ensemble. For example, a blue garter can be used for this purpose. And then when it comes to, well, Pretty well-known wedding traditions is, of course, carrying the bride over the threshold of the shared house. Because there's said to be demons lurking under the threshold, under the stairs, whatever. And if the groom carries his bride, they can't harm her. Makes total sense, right? Once the ceremony has taken place, the rings have been exchanged, the vows as well, then it's, of course, time for a big party, during which, of course, you can play all different kinds of wedding games. It doesn't have to be a traditional one, can be anything that seems fun to the bride and groom. I, as a best man, together with the other best man, because they had two, yes, that is possible as well, and together with the two bridesmaids they had, we came up with, well, we didn't come up with this necessarily, but we chose the wedding games of comparing, like when, for example, the bride and groom have to answer questions like, who do you think sleeps in most of the time or longer, for example? And then if the bride thinks uh, it is her, then she holds up one of her own shoes. And if the groom thinks it's the bride, then he holds up one of hers as well, or the other way around, or, well, you can hold up your own shoe, or the shoes go off, and then you swap shoes, at least one of each in, well, the left hand, for example, the bride's shoe and the right hand, the groom's shoe and the other way around and, and so on and so forth. And then I, I'm pretty sure I'm confusing you here, but then the questions get asked. They sit with their backs to each other and they don't really know what the other person is answering. And it's just great fun for everyone who can see both answers at the same time. I filmed everything for them as well so that they can enjoy it later. Also, one of my friends built a piñata, Dungeons and Dragons related, because the game that we play together is D&D. Uh, most of the time, the bride and groom and me and other people. And so, well, one of our group members actually built a beholder piñata, which was amazing. They loved it and uh, I also filmed it. Can't show you stuff I filmed here, unfortunately, because it's private, but it was amazing. So as you can see, anything and everything is possible. Uh, there's many games that you can look up online or you can just make up your own, whatever floats your boat. I hope now you have a better overview over what weddings are like in Germany. I made another video about a very specific German tradition called der Polterabend. Not gonna take anything away just yet. You can find it, uh, well, on my channel Get Germanized or here. And you can find another video about German traditions down here. And apart from that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to get Germanized. Goodbye and auf Wiedersehen.